For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. that uh, it was a setback for the union and there's no point in any of us pretending otherwise. Um, everybody, the members in particular, put a huge amount of work into getting that ballot result. Um, what I would say is that people do need to recognise uh, the laws that we're up against and how determined Royal Mail are on any point um, to take us to court. Uh, but they will never win a dispute in court. It's important that we understand that. And today, uh, between me and Terry, we'll be setting out how we're going to respond to some of that. Um, I suppose my overriding memory of the day, actually, to give you a bit of an insight into what was happening in the court, was, and I still can't get this out of my head, was a moment where Royal Mail, in their case, put forward a, a number of videos of our representatives and members in different parts of the country doing what I think we've always believed in our lives is what trade unions should be doing. And the day that they stop doing it will be the day that we will never be a trade union. Um, and that was saying to our members, get out there, get out and vote, uh, show everybody that you're voting and support your union. And basically you could feel in the room that a judge, one judge, uh, who you know I'm gonna say is part of an establishment of judges, um, who will never do their best for, for us, um, is sitting there looking at that video. And I think it throws them into a, a position where they think there's something seriously wrong here. There's people supporting a trade union. And from that moment, we felt proud of what was we were seeing. And you could see that the judge felt very differently. Um, so a reflection on the day is this, really. It was right to be angry. Um, and we're still angry. It was right uh, for people to be bitterly disappointed. But never let that override the fact that you've got to recognise these people will always be against us. And some of the things that I saw, and, and it's this point that I cannot get out of my head, there was not a single person out of 110,000 people who were balloted who came out and went to Royal Mail and said, do you know what? the union or its representatives have interfered with my ballot paper. There was not a single person who complained to the independent scrutineer out of 110,000 people, and there wasn't a, a single person who's gone to the regulator that regulates trade unions. And yet a judge, on evidence put forward by one senior manager, who we do not believe uh, was telling the truth, is the best way to put it, um, can actually side with the employer. There is something fundamentally wrong with the law. Um, we've got to get over that and we'll get on to talk about uh, how we're going to do that in the next hour. Terry? Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, we knew this was a tough fight. You know, we're in struggle with these people. We, we believe and always has done. We've said this all the way through the campaign that Rico Back has come in. I think he's totally underestimated this trade union or overestimated what he thinks he can do with us. Uh, what they want is obedience. They don't want us to challenge anything that they want to do to this business. He's put around him a set of managers that he thinks, uh, that we believe are anti-union, that he thinks will drive us into that position. So did we ever think they wasn't going to try and take us to court again? No. I think what fell in their lap and fell in their favour without doubt was the general election, which we believe has influenced the decision of the judge. Um, and so this is just one stage in our war. But I want to say to, to all our members, we have tried to stress this, and I know people don't always hear everything when we're out doing our meetings, doing our briefings. We haven't just got one string to our bow. We've got plenty of other. We've got option B, option C. We will keep the pressure on. And the thing is that Rico Beck and his people need to understand is he cannot deliver his plan he says he wants to deliver all the time we've got 110,000 members that are not cooperating. And, and quite frankly, we won't cooperate. And I said yesterday, 
I was angry, but it was still at my true feelings. He will be the most unsuccessful CEO of the Great British Post Office, Postal Service ever. And I don't take that back either. This is just one part of this struggle, which will go on for some time, but I am absolutely, well, we are absolutely convinced. We've got another a number of other things that we're gonna do, and we will win this dispute. Right. Um, we use the best lawyers that we can find in the trade union movement, and we had the best lawyers in the trade union movement who support trade unions. We've used them at every step along the way. This has not been something where, you know, we've suddenly introduced them at the point where Royal Mail decided to take us into court. We've been consulting with the lawyers at every step along the way. Um, I mean, one of the things that the judge said yesterday uh, you know, was about the general election. And I think you've got to accept, and every one of our members have got to accept, that this is a massive moment for the country. Uh, we didn't choose to have a ballot uh, in the middle of a general election. The general election came the other way. And what the lawyers have said to us as well, we've been speaking to them this morning about grounds for appeal. Um, we'll come on to that at some point, I'm sure. It is that the lawyers have said to us effectively there's a wall of prejudice against your union at a point when there's a general election because of the reality of how a general election and postal votes and the uh, material, the election material, the different parties goes through the postal system. And he said to us this morning, we can't get over that wall of prejudice with the lawyer that we had yesterday, um, with, sorry, with the judge that we had yesterday. And, you know, you're, you're free to look at that. They have effectively said that we have interfered with the ballot process, um, even though not one single member of our union has complained that we've interfered with the ballot process. Now, you know, these lawyers, these judges rather, are part of an establishment that are there not to support workers. And the anti-trade union laws that are in place, you cannot escape the fact that these laws were put there by a Tory government to put unions like ours down. And I'll finish on this point. You know, we will never move away from the type of campaigning that we've been doing, uh, which is about engaging our members on another level. Actually, the whole of the trade union movement looks at what we do in campaigning and is saying we need to be able to do that. It's not the union that's wrong, it's the law that's wrong. You know, it's difficult, isn't it? I don't, I don't know who Paul is, I don't know him from a bar of soap, but um, he's, there was 25,000 people who didn't participate in this ballot. <coughs> there, there was a very small proportion of the ones who did, who voted no. Uh, so, you know, you're going to have some people, I'm not suggesting Paul was for one minute, but I'm just saying you're going to have on social media, you're going to have some negativity coming through. I think there's a difference in being angry with what the employer's done or what that judge has ruled, which, you know, even people in the legal prof profession have texted us and emailed us today saying that was mm. a disgraceful decision. So, um, but they're stacked, the, you know, the law's stacked up against trade unions. Last year, by the way, last Christmas, it was people from BA that were stopped from going on strike and the judge made reference to that yesterday because it was Christmas uh, and they shouldn't be going on strike. So things are stacked against union. You've, you've seen you've seen messages from the TUC today. So, and I know Dave's having conversations with the TUC because the cases like this are, are through the trade union movement are making unions now saying we've seriously got a challenge back on these trade union laws. And that's uh, obviously that's you know one of the things Dave campaigns on with a new deal for workers. But the point is, Paul, you can you can be as judgmental as that. I tell you now, this union has had nothing but results in protecting its people. Five, six years into privatisation, we're still protecting our people. Yesterday wasn't the end. I'm telling you, and you judge me on the end of this dispute. Yesterday wasn't the end. It was only the start of our victory. I tell you, now that may not make sense to you, but I tell you, we've got other strings in our bow. It ain't just about going on strike. None of our members have lost their job. None of our members have lost any money. And I, I'm promising you now, so you can judge me. You come back on when we get a final agreement. Because people complained last time in 2017 when we, uh, we was forced into mediation. But we came out of that with what people were saying is an, it was an excellent agreement. 
So it, it don't always end the way they want. The publicity we've had, the pressure we're putting on Rico back, the pressure that we shareholders looking at him saying, well, are you going to deliver your plan? Because you promised you was going to deliver a plan. Well, it don't look like it. And he will not deliver his plan unless he bends a knee and talks seriously and negotiates with this trade union. And the vast majority of our 110,000 members make us far stronger than him and they will help us deliver the resolution we need to this dispute. Yeah,